Welcome and thanks for joining us for this very special ceremony, awarding the 2020 B'nai B'rith National Healthcare Award and celebrating the good works of this organization. This award has always been presented at a gala, an in-person event where our awardee, their friends and family, colleagues, leaders in our field, and B'nai B'rith could come together to applaud the career achievements of a major healthcare leader. This year will be different as it has been different for so many things in our lives. We will be honoring not just a leader deeply deserving of our recognition, but all those caregivers at the front line contending with COVID-19. Our gala is virtual and maybe even more personal than usual. For at this moment in time, healthcare is defined by an unprecedented pandemic. In American hospitals and hospitals around the world, caregivers are putting themselves at risk to take care of others. Now more than ever, this nation is getting a glimpse of the role hospitals assume for their communities and witnessing the true meaning of service. As an industry, we have pivoted and shifted gears to match the demands of COVID-19. As the disease has advanced, we have evolved innovating and going flat out to save lives. This fight is not over, and who knows what tomorrow will bring. What I do know, however, is that the healthcare profession and medical community are fully meeting the challenge. Our colleagues throughout the country are focused like a laser beam on their mission under terribly difficult and sometimes horrendous circumstances. Due to COVID, our presentation of this coveted B'nai B'rith Healthcare Award looks different, but our purpose for celebrating has never been more important. As you know, this award was established 38 years ago to honor the works of individuals and their healthcare organizations that set the standard for health, innovation, initiative, and leadership. This year's honoree, Marna Bergstrom, her team at Yale New Haven Health and Yale New Haven Hospital and every healthcare worker around the world has raised the bar for excellence and perseverance in care. Tonight we will celebrate their courage, determination, and unconquerable spirit. Marna is truly an exceptional leader in our field. She has accomplished so much professionally. Marna is that special kind of leader who institutions and communities would not be the same without her efforts and contributions. And for that, we are proud to honor her and grateful for the impact of a career based on achievement. She has made a difference. In terms of those who made this virtual event in honor of Marna so exceptional, I would like to take a moment to especially thank my fellow co-chairs as well as our tribute committee for all they have done and point out that this virtual gala would not be possible without the generosity of sponsors and supporters. I want to begin by thanking our co-chairs, Chip Kahn, Rick Pollack, Tom Prisilak, Tom Zenti, and Barry Friedman. Without their help and continuing support, we would not have the opportunity to share in this special video presentation with you. Within a very short span of time, we've been forced to change not only the way in which we go about our daily lives, but also the very fabric of our community. The mission of B'nai B'rith has and always will be steadfast support for civil rights, fighting for social justice and equality of all kinds, and the betterment of life for our citizens. Our efforts to combat anti-Semitism, which began early on, remains especially important today. As we continue our work in an unfamiliar and unpredictable global landscape, our B'nai B'rith community has risen to extraordinary heights to ensure that our seniors are being cared for. Our advocacy work is continued, humanitarian relief is provided, and that our mission remains steady. Throughout this pandemic, we have remained dedicated to the population hit the hardest, our seniors, through the B'nai B'rith Center for Senior Services, which we call CSS. With over 5,000 seniors in apartments and 38 housing facilities across the country, we've worked hard to ensure the safety and dignity of our elder citizens. We care about our community, about those in need, and the larger world around us. In a time when hope and positivity are needed now more than ever, 
our CSS staff and facility managers have provided it. And we appreciate their courage during this time of uncertainty. Our disaster relief program has helped so many through this crisis, be it sending protective gear to Italy or assisting those in need in Panama and Uruguay. Our global efforts are an example of what our organization can do and should do in this crisis. As our healthcare community has shown us, we'll emerge stronger from this pandemic. We're grateful to come together as a community despite these challenging times. We're grateful to Marna, her team at Yale New Haven Hospital, and the healthcare heroes around the world who inspire us every day. She serves as a shining example of leadership in this crisis. And everyone at B'nai B'rith and our thousands of members worldwide pay tribute to her, her staff, and those who work tirelessly every day to keep us safe. I have never been prouder to be part of the hospital community than I have been over the past many months. The frontline caregiver response to the pandemic is nothing short of heroic. It takes the teamwork and coordination of each person in the hospital to keep everyone safe while also providing patients with the life-saving care they need, whether fighting COVID-19 or suffering from a heart attack. The list of heroes is long. Physicians, nurses, therapists, clinicians, engineers, environmental service teams, food service workers, volunteers, and administrators, they all stepped up during this crisis. I have had the chance to talk to those who are educating the next generation of physicians, the stories they tell about future doctors graduating early or changing their residency so they can defeat the virus is truly inspiring. All of us should be forever thankful for everyone's spirit of service, dedication, and resilience at this terrible time. Barna, it's a privilege to be asked to say a few words about you and your recognition this year by B'nai B'rith in an organization that we are proud to be associated with as an industry. I also want to thank our caregivers and everyone who stepped forward during this time of unprecedented peril in which we find ourselves today. No one ever plans for a pandemic, but we plan for disasters. And as an industry, I know Marna, you and your team have done an extraordinary job responding to the needs of the patients who come to Yale for care. Most interestingly, our caregivers are far more than clinical caregivers. They're therapists, they're physicians, they're nurses, they're support staff, they're those who make our patients' lives more comfortable. Marta's a multi-dimensional professional. She cares deeply about her family, her community, her organization, and our entire industry. So Marta, on behalf of all of your colleagues and friends across the country, and certainly for me personally, I wish we had the chance to say this in person, but congratulations on this recognition. It's a wonderful achievement for a lifetime of effort in making this world a healthier place. Congratulations, Marna. Hello, everyone. I'd like to begin first by thanking, honoring, and congratulating the incredible frontline staff here at Cedar sinai and at hospitals and healthcare facilities around the country. Your selflessness and your resilience has been an inspiration to all of us. So on behalf of the many, many patients that you all serve so well throughout this pandemic, thank you so very much. I would also like to congratulate my friend and colleague, Marna Borgstrom, on receiving the Chuck Lauer National Healthcare Leadership Award. Marna, your leadership of Yale New Haven Health System speaks for itself and the impact that it's had in the region and across the country. But also I want to recognize your contribution to important health policy decisions the country is facing. Some real challenges for sure, but your contributions have been invaluable. Thank you very, very much. It's a special honor to join with B'nai B'rith in celebrating our brave, resilient healthcare heroes, while we also pay tribute to Mona Borkstrom who is one of the most respected and admired healthcare executives in America and a true leading light in our field. You know, we talk a lot about heroes these days, but what defines a hero? My young grandson might answer, that's easy. It's someone with a mask, a cape, and superpowers. 
<laughs> well, this year, he sure got the mask part right. But of course, heroes are people noted for courageous acts or noble character. They are selfless. They always put others first. And they are courageous in the face of risk or danger. In our world, heroes are the frontline caregivers, such as doctors, nurses, therapists, and technicians, all of whom fight off exhaustion to come to work every day, ready to care, comfort, and heal. And there are also EMTs, as well as those who clean the rooms and bring the food, all working as a team to make the patient experience the best it can be. Healthcare heroes are found at the bedside, the back office, the corner office, and the boardroom. Everyone's contribution matters. And during this unprecedented year, unlike any of us in this field have ever faced, it's a pleasure to recognize Marna Borgstrom and her spectacular team of heroes at Yale New Haven Health. Of course, Marna would never use the word hero to describe herself. So let's try a few other words that her colleagues use when talking about her. Words like integrity, compassion, and intelligence. Marner is a true servant leader who always makes her team and the organizations she's serving the top priority. It's never about herself. And that's why she is an inspiration for all who work with her. That's also why in any discussion of our nation's most outstanding healthcare leaders, you'll find Marner at the top of the list. She has made so many valuable contributions, not only in Connecticut, but at the national level as well. She is a member of the Board of Trustees of the American Hospital Association, where her counsel and wisdom are highly valued. Marner has also served on the Board of Directors of the Association of American Medical Colleges, chaired Vizient, and she currently chairs the board of the Coalition to Protect America's Healthcare. And while these kinds of awards and recognitions are nice, what they really signal is the appreciation, respect, and admiration from friends and colleagues in the healthcare field. In this way, she is much like another giant, the recently departed Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. During her memorial service, her rabbi said, for Justice Ginsburg, justice did not arrive like a lightning bolt, but rather through dogged persistence all the days of her life. Real change, enduring change, happens one step at a time. Just like Justice Ginsburg, Warner understands that meaningful progress comes from being a steady and persistent voice for progress. And she's done just that when it comes to improving quality, promoting diversity and inclusion, supporting medical research, and training the next generation of healthcare professionals. When Warner says we're going to do something, it gets done. Whether it's creating an employee hardship fund to support staff members who've undergone personal setbacks, or whether it's leading efforts to share resources among hospitals in multiple states when COVID slammed Connecticut, New York, and New Jersey, or whether it's being an advocate for addressing health equity among vulnerable populations, her leadership is reflective of B'nai B'rith's tradition of community service and promoting social justice. Mona Borkstrom represents the very best in healthcare and makes us all very proud. Congratulations, Marna. The Charles S. Lauer National Healthcare Award always honors distinguished, innovative healthcare practitioners and leaders in the medical field. But at no time in the history of this award has healthcare been more under the microscope than this year, 2020. How fitting it is that B'nai B'rith International honors someone with the skill, wisdom, and heart of Marna Borgstrom. But it is you, Marna, who honors us because of your passion for social justice, caring patients, healthcare providers, and entire hospital systems. It is no wonder that Governor Lamont chose you to be a leader of his COVID-19 response team. Working cooperatively and collaboratively is the science of leadership and unity. In transplant terms, we are a perfect match. You may know that B'nai B'rith International is inspired every day to perform tikkun, repairing the ills and promoting the well being, health, and safety of all people. The proceeds from this event will allow us to take a holistic approach to repairing the mind, body, and spirit. 
on behalf of our 177-year-old organization, I am thrilled to present this award to you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I want to begin by offering my deep appreciation to the entire B'nai B'rith organization for this great honor. The mission of Yale New Haven Health is closely aligned with the work of the B'nai B'rith as an organization fully dedicated to social justice and civic involvement, B'nai B'rith has been a true leader in our communities. And like the organization I am proud to lead, it has worked tirelessly to drive change based upon the core values of fairness and equity. Those values have never been more important than they are today. As we navigate a year filled with fear, anger, uncertainty, and far too little civility, we need to find our better selves. The work of B'nai B'rith reminds us of this every day through its words and through its actions. I am humbled to receive the Charles Lauer Award and to be counted among the remarkable individuals who have been recognized in the past, people who really define our field, people like Tom Zenti, Tom Prislak, and Chip Kahn, to name a few. They are true leaders in healthcare. Secondly, this honor is particularly important to me because it reflects the very essence of community service and engagement. Our health system has long been committed not only to providing high value health services to all who need them, but also to working with our communities on improving access to education, healthier food, and safe housing all of which are fundamental to building healthier communities. And as proud as I am to receive tonight's honor, I believe it is more about the commitment of the entire Yale New Haven Health community who give of themselves each and every day. Over the course of more than 40 years at Yale New Haven, I have had the rare privilege to learn from and walk among some of the most extraordinary people anywhere. Never has that been more evident then in response to the unprecedented threat of COVID-19 of our frontline caregivers, especially physicians and nurses, as well as others who have supported them. As most people sheltered in place and as the world as we knew it came to a crushing halt, the heroes among us, the men and women of our health systems put themselves at risk daily to meet the needs of those afflicted by the novel coronavirus or other health-related emergencies. They stood tall and sacrificed so much to serve their patients and their communities. So many poignant stories have emerged during the past nine months, stories that fill you with pride and some that reduce you to tears. I'd like to share one of those briefly tonight. One of our nurses, a young woman who works in the emergency department at our hospital in New London, Connecticut, named Laura Airy, came to define all that is good and compassionate about her profession. You may recall that early in the COVID outbreak, the New York metropolitan area was overwhelmed. It quickly became the original COVID hotspot. Hospitals in the city were besieged with patients and outbreaks that became all too common, including in surrounding areas. Our hospital in Greenwich, Connecticut, which sits directly on the New York border, was suddenly impacted with hundreds of patients diagnosed with COVID, at one point filling more than half of the beds of this small community hospital. The caregivers there were exhausted. Supplies and medications were being tapped. And in the midst of this crisis, when most people ran to places of refuge and for safety, Laura Airy stepped up. Just when the pandemic was peaking, she raised her hand and volunteered. She traveled more than two hours each day to Greenwich and another two hours back to her home just to relieve some of her tired nursing colleagues and to lend a hand in caring for some of the most seriously ill patients. During that time, she battled this virus with all of her strength and using all of her training. She ran to the center of the pandemic and she put herself directly in harm's way while she worked side by side with colleagues she had never even met before. But what makes this story truly remarkable is something that I came to find out much later. 
Just days before she volunteered, Laura learned that her cousin, also a nurse who worked in New York City, had been exposed to this deadly disease. And sadly, as those around her continued to fight, Laura's cousin succumbed to the virus. Managing the grief over the loss of a close family member, Laura could have done what most people might do. She could have given into her own sorrow. She could have mourned her loss and stayed safe in her local community. No one would have blamed her for that. But she did just the opposite. She stepped up to honor her cousin's life. Later, when she was asked why she volunteered, her answer was simple. She said it was her calling. To me, that is the essence of service. I think of Laura tonight, as well as thousands of our colleagues who stood bravely against this virus and who continue to do so today as we are experiencing an uptick in this virus. These moments call upon all of us to be better. They remind us all of our humanity and they show the world what courage and fortitude can accomplish. Laura and her colleagues are the brave ones. They are the heroes. They inspire me each and every day, and they are the true recipients of this very distinguished award. Thank you so much. Well, since this is a B'nai B'rith event, in the Jewish tradition, the Passover Seder concludes with a familiar phrase, next year in Jerusalem. And while we don't know yet where this award will be given next year, hopefully, it's a place where we can all gather together in person to celebrate together. COVID-19 has tested our country and its health system in unprecedented ways. And it isn't close to being over yet. While the pandemic has produced death, grief, and highlighted inequities in our society, it has also prompted countless acts of love, kindness, and heroism. Like all storms, this too will eventually pass, the sun will come out, and we will use this experience to rebuild and reimagine healthcare in a way that makes improvements for the future. You know, every generation has its calling and must meet the test. Many of us are children and grandchildren of the greatest generation, whose parents and grandparents saved the world from tyranny. Many of us are parents of the 9-11 generation, whose children have chosen to serve and keep our country safe. Our generation's duty is to win the battle against COVID-19 and to leverage our leadership and influence in building a better health system and a more just society to create a brighter future for generations to come. We can do it, we must do it, and we will do it. Now we will close, and I want to thank all of you for attending our virtual event in honor of Marna, as well as all the caregivers fighting the pandemic. We are living through a historic moment. We are still in its midst, but we will prevail. Hopefully, we will learn from this cataclysm and be better prepared in the future. I am confident the healthcare field whose metal has been tested will emerge even stronger. Again, this award is about celebrating Marna and all hospital workers, from doctors and nurses to those preparing meals and keeping facilities clean. Every action taken inside those four walls is about patient care and saving lives in the communities we serve. Work that is extraordinary to witness. Thank you. As we depart, I want to remind everyone to go online to view our special tribute journal. There, you can learn more about our honoree, Marna, and our supporters. I do also want to take a moment to thank you and our sponsors once again. Thanks again to each of you, and God willing, we will see you next year in person.